Welcome to the Virtual Cocktails and Dreams Bar, everyone. My name is Zach, and I am your virtual bartender. The world has gone virtual, including bartending. Hey, how funny is that? This segment is brought to us by McGinnis, who is a part of the Corby Spirit and the Wine Limited family. If you haven't heard of McGinnis before, it is a premium uh, mixing liqueur that you can see in the market. It's one of my favorites. It's got the best flavors, and it mixes very well. Definitely in addition to your experience at home or behind the bar. All right, guys, enough talking. Let's start making some drinks. All right, everyone, before we get started, I want to do a little bit of a tutorial on this very common household bar set, the three-piece shaker. Everyone tends to have one of these at home, eh? So what I wanted to tell you is one thing. When you're making your cocktail and you're putting it into your shaker tin and you're placing your lid on top, don't get too excited and smack too hard because you might create a seal and it might be really hard to open, okay? So just make sure you place it on there nice and firm, but don't smack it too hard, all right? Also, you're going to need a jigger. This is a jigger. You got two ounces on one side and an ounce on the other. If you don't have one of these, you can use a shot glass. Now, if your shot glass says something like, I love Cancun, it's definitely a big shot glass, eh? Probably a double, so pour responsibly. If you don't have a three-piece shaker you can always use a mason jar with a lid a protein shaker or one of those sports water bottles eh? all right everyone so enough talking let's start making some drinks all right everyone so we're gonna start off with the lunar tonic so first things first you're gonna need a tall glass I want you to grab your cutting board we're gonna need a knife and we're gonna need a lime all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some lime wedges so first things first what you want to do is place your hand on top of your fruit press down and roll it. We want to soften it up so we get all the fresh juice, all the juice we need to make this cocktail absolutely delicious. Hey, all right, you'll feel it softening up. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our knife and we're just gonna slice off the tips of our fruit like so and sit it up just like so. We're gonna discard the ends. We're gonna take our knife and slice right down the middle, all right. We're gonna put this one off to the side and use that later, but we are gonna cut this into wedges. So you wanna place it on its belly. We're gonna take our knife and put it on a 45 degree angle and we're gonna slice outward all the way to the middle of your line like so. We're gonna pinch and roll and we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side, okay? So we're gonna put these limes off to the side and we're gonna start adding some of the fun stuff, okay? All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add ice to our glass. Now remember everybody, ice is nice. The more ice in a cocktail, the colder it's gonna be, the properly diluted it's gonna be, and the more uh, height it's gonna have for better presentation. Hey, so we've got a glass with ice. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one ounce of our McGinnis Elderflower Liqueur. Just like so, Ooh. and just we're pouring it over top of our ice like that. Oh, I cannot wait to try this one, eh? All right, what we're gonna do now is follow it up with an ounce and a half of beef eater gin. I'm the first to admit that all this flare bartending stuff is completely unnecessary, eh? We're gonna pour that over our fresh ice just like so. Ooh, that's gonna be a stiff drink, eh? Definitely a pandemic cocktail, I love it. All right, now what we're gonna do here, everybody, is we're going to add tonic water. We're just gonna to top it off with tonic, just like so. This is an easy cocktail to make, but it's super delicious, hey. So we've got our tonic. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of the lime wedges that we cut earlier, and we're gonna squeeze it on top, get all that juice in there, just like so. We're gonna place it in, and we're gonna grab ourselves a nice little bar spoon. We're just gonna press down that, that line and we're just gonna do a nice little roll. We don't wanna over stir because we don't wanna kill the bubbles from the tonic, but we do want all that flavor throughout the cocktail, just like so. All right. So here you have it, everybody, the Lunar Tonic. Cheers. Oh, that tastes like more, doesn't it? You get the gin, you get the elderflower and the tonic. Absolutely delicious, super smooth, and I can't wait to make myself another one, hey. All right, everyone, now I'm gonna show you an amazing little party trick. All right, everyone, I hope you're excited and ready to learn this amazing party trick, hey. So all you're gonna need is a can, so feel free to run to your fridge and grab a can. If you have the smallest size can, I definitely recommend those, it's easier to learn. But if you have the medium size can or a tall boy, something like this, you can absolutely do it with one of these as well. This one's just a little bit more difficult. Okay, so first things first, when you're doing this trick, what you wanna do, as a beginner, you wanna get your hand a little wet. Now I'm using my left hand in this demonstration. I just grabbed some ice and I'm just rubbing my palm. If you're 
you're in the kitchen, just run your hand underneath the sink, but you wanna get your hand a little wet, okay? Now, I'm using my left hand in this demonstration. I'm gonna take the base of this can. You wanna make sure that the base is in perfect condition. You wanna slide it to the outside of your hand, near your pinky like so. You wanna press that can into your hand and slide and roll the can to the middle of your hand like so. Now, here is where the trick happens. While you're pressing and rolling in, you want to open your fingers all the way back. Really focus on that pinky. Pull that pinky back, pull all your fingers back, and you'll feel a nice, strong, tight suction. Just stuck to your hand like so, okay? If you relax your hands, the can will fall, all right? So we want to relax that hand, place the can on the outside, press, slide and roll and open your fingers all the way back. You'll feel that nice tight suction just like so. You wanna be able to roll your wrist like this. But again, number one rule, focus on that pinky because you don't want it to fall off your hand, okay? Now here's a fun little uh, technique just to make it look a little bit more smooth, okay? When you're going to open the drink, what you want to first do, you just want to have the opening of the can in between your thumb and your index finger like this. So when you're sliding and rolling, the opening of the can is facing down and not facing up. Because when we're going to pour it, you want it to be nice and smooth. You don't want to have to roll your whole arm over and it takes away some of that finesse, okay? So for those of you that have it, let's see if you're ready to pour it, eh? So remember, we're relaxing our hand taking the base on the outside, sliding and rolling and really pulling our fingers back just like that, creating a nice strong seal. We're keeping it uh, facing up. We're gonna open. Remember to keep that pinky back and we're gonna pour just like this. This trick here is the best party trick that you can learn. So practice it, learn it, and show off to your friends and family the next time you have a little house party. Eh? What a great trick. Whew. All right, up next, we're gonna be making the Mars Rita. So first things first, we're gonna grab a little bit of lime and we're just gonna rub it on the outside of our glassware, like so. We're just gonna do half of the glass. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that side with the juice and we're gonna roll it in some salt here, okay? We wanna give it a nice little sugar kiss rim, making the glass look a little pretty and giving it a little bit of an extra uh, experience to this cocktail, eh? So it should look like that, okay? So we're just gonna place this glassware off to the side and we're gonna grab our mixing tins. We're, here we go, we're gonna get started. So everybody go grab your cutting board and your knife. Okay, so what we wanna do is add an ounce of lime juice, all right? So I'm gonna use the full lime. Now you can use a press if you like, all right? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go a little old school, eh? I'm just gonna cut these into wedges, all right? Just like so cutting up into four little pieces like that. And I'm just gonna squeeze each individual lime inside. I'm even gonna place the citrus peel in there as well, just like so, just like so. And last but not least, just like this. It was a lucky one. All right, so we've got our lime in there, everyone. All right, up next, we're gonna add two ounces of Altos tequila. Ooh, I love this stuff. I'm just gonna place that over top like this. All right, so now we've got our fresh lime, our Altos tequila, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow it up with a little bit of McGinnis, triple sec. We're gonna add an ounce just like so, and we're gonna add that on top of all of our ingredients. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some ice and we're gonna give it a nice hard shake. So we're gonna add ice to our shaker tin. Gonna add our lid, all right. Now, when you're shaking a cocktail, it's very important to have a little bit of style, all right? You wanna use both hands on your shaker tin. You never wanna shake towards your guest or towards your camera. You wanna shake either to the right or to the left. We're gonna hold the shaker tin in the middle of our chest. We're gonna go up, in, down, in, up, and down, and we're gonna shake it like it owes us money. Now the number one rule here is when you're shaking a cocktail, make sure you smile. Because if you don't smile, it looks like this. Nobody likes an angry bartender, so give it a big smile. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our awesome glassware. We're gonna fill it with fresh ice. Remember, ice is nice. The more ice, the better, like so. We're gonna open up our lid and we're just gonna pour it over. 
Ooh, look at that marsarita. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna garnish it, okay? So I want you to grab your cutting board again. All right, we're gonna grab a lime and we're gonna do a nice little wheel. So we're gonna grab our knife. Again, we're gonna cut off the ends just like so. We're gonna get rid of those guys right here. And we're gonna hold it on its side and we're gonna slice long ways and we're gonna cut a nice little wheel, okay? We're gonna do one more. I want the bigger one for the uh, better presentation. There we go. Now you have a couple options, everyone. You can place it on top as a float or you can add a nice little slice, pull it, and let it sit on the rim like that, all right? So here you have a Mars Frida. Cheers. Oh, that's a good one. That's super delicious. I'm a big margarita fan, everyone. And this one right here is definitely getting two thumbs up, eh? All right, everyone, so we just made two delicious cocktails, but there's one more thing that I wanna show you. One more thing I wanna teach you. I wanna demonstrate to you a toast. Now that the world is opening again and we can raise our glasses with our friends and our loved ones, it's always good to have one toast in your bag of tricks. But before I teach you this toast, I wanna show you a small demonstration of flair bartending, eh? So have a seat and enjoy the show. Let's go. Gonna tell and Mary Bond, Uncle John. He claimed he had the music, but he had a lot of fun. Oh, baby. Yeah, baby. Woo, baby. Have me some fun tonight. Yeah. Well, no talk, sign of cheek. Feel speech, you got everything that Uncle John need. Oh, I hope you guys are having a good time, man. Eh? Ooh, that's a strong one. Thank you very much, everyone. Now, what I need everybody to do is this. Grab your favorite cocktail. We're gonna look into the camera, we're gonna raise our glass, and we're gonna look our loved ones in the face, and we're gonna say this. May the best day of your past be the worst day of your future. Cheers. Well, everyone, our time at the bar has come to an end. The countdown for the award show is happening soon, so we gotta get you there, All right? A big thank you to McGinnis for hanging out with us at the bar, and a big thank you to the Corby Spirits and the Wine Limited family. Hey, thank you so much for having us see at the bar. I hope you guys have an amazing evening, and I hope to see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>